And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. We're going to take a look at the downfall of Pompeii. Now, I've actually reviewed this before. Uh, I'm, I believe on Miami Dice with Sam Healy, but this is a new version of the downfall of Pompeii. The original version uh, comes in actually a flat box, looks like this. You can see the new version here is a smaller box, half the size actually, a little bit thicker. Um, but it's essentially the same game. It's mostly just a box change and then a very small variant that's been added. So let's take a look if you've never played The Downfall of Pompeii before. It's a great family game. Let's take a look at how it plays and we'll come back. So here's the board for Pompeii. The board actually comes with a, a hole in the middle of it where you, you punch the hole out. And then you'll, you'll take the volcano, which is a plastic piece, and you put it together like this. And then you put the plastic piece on the ground, drop the board over it, and you have a volcano as part of the board. I mean, the volcano is there mostly for aesthetic purposes, but it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, you'll build a deck, and the, the deck, this kind of a convoluted way of setting up a deck, but you're going to be drawing cards from a deck. Players are going to start with a handful of cards. And the game basically is in two halves. In the first half, players will initially start by playing this card. You'll see this card is a three and it's purple. So I look on the board to where three is and it's a purple building. And I put one person of my color in one of the halves of that building. Um, and so you'll continue to do that. Players will go around the table playing these cards. At some point, you're going to draw... AD 79, one of these cards here. And when that happens, you will continue to do this, except now when you play one of these cards, let's say for example, you play this 11 here, and there already is some people in the 11 building. So I go over here to the 11 spot, and I add a person my color, let's say I'm red. Since there's already two people in that half of the 11 building, I can put two people, two relatives out. Now I can place those people in the 11 building. I can place them in other buildings that are the same color. In this instance, the 10 building is brown. Or I can place them in neutral buildings that are on the board. And so as time goes by, players are going to be filling the board up with different people. You want to get as many people as you can. Sometimes players will draw an omen card, which means they get to take somebody and throw them into the volcano. Hopefully, they will actually make it in the volcano, unlike that poor shot that I am there. So yay, the town is filling up. Suddenly, at some point, someone's going to draw the second 8079 card. And at this case, the first part of the phase, the first phase of the game ends when we go into second phase. The first thing we do is each player is going to draw from a bag of tiles some volcano tiles. Now when you draw a volcano lava tile, it will show a symbol on it. This one shows a scroll, so I place it here on top of the scroll space on the board. And you're going to go around the board and do six of these tiles. So here's a helmet, so the helmet one goes over here. The third tile I draw is a coin, and the coin one goes right here. The fourth one is drawn is a pillar, and so the pillar goes uh, right here. You can see there's different spots where the lava will come from. The fifth one's another scroll. Now when this happens, the player who draws it can't put it on the scroll space, so they put it adjacent to it. So let's say this player is red. Of course, they don't want to kill themselves, so they put it here. And the two people that got hit by the lava go into the volcano. And then the sixth one here is another scroll, and this time it's blue. And he's angry at what red did, so he makes the lava flow this way and kills those two people. So this will continue. Uh, I mean, we first, that, that's kind of the setup for the phase, actually. Then, each player on their turn is going to first draw a tile from the bag. So they'll take the tile and they just place it adjacent. It might kill people, it might not. Then they can move two people. Now, when you move someone, you will move them a number of spaces equal to where they are. So let's say down here, I want to move one of these black pieces. They will move two spaces because there's two guys there. One, two. This guy, if I want to move him now, only can move one. 
So that's how I would do that. So the, obviously, the more people that are in a space, the farther you can move. Up here, this guy can move three, one, two, three. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get them outside the city gates. Once you get outside the city gates, you put that person in front of you and they're safe. Meanwhile, of course, lava tiles are gonna keep being drawn and are going to be just destroying people and sending them into the volcano and starting in new spots. And it is possible at some point when you're placing these lava tiles that somebody, a whole section of the city might get cut off. Let's say for example, and this isn't correct actually, but let's say lava tiles manage to flow like this. At this point, these four people over here have no way of getting out. There's no, no, I'm sorry, there's a way there, but let's say that way was blocked too. And now there's no way for them to get out of town. When that happens, they all die. And it is occasional that a whole section of the city is cut off from getting out of one of the gates. The lava will cut people off. You will continue to play this round until either A, everyone is dead, or B, you've drawn all the lava tiles from the bag. At that point, the volcano explodes and anyone on the board is dead. The person who has the most people that have got out of the city is the winner of the game. If there's a tie, and there's often ties, then you'll open up the volcano and whoever has the fewest people in there between the tied people is the winner. There's also a small variant in which players have the, there's these three tiles you can throw in. They're essentially double-sided tiles so that when you draw them, you can choose which side it goes on. It's a very small variant. I believe it's included in this version of the game for the first time. Now, interestingly enough, I said it was a family game, but it's about death and destruction and killing people in a tragedy that if it had happened today would be very horrific, but since it happened 2,000 years ago, people don't seem to mind as much. It is very abstract that, yes, you're throwing people in the volcano, but they're little hexagonal uh, wooden pieces that you throw in there. The game is very fun. The only caveat I would have for family games is that the setup for cards is convoluted. You split in the seven decks of four and you're sticking cards in there. But other than that, very fun. Sure, there's a lot of luck. You're, you're going to be playing these cards, and sometimes you'll draw omen cards and you have to throw people in a volcano, or you, or, and you'd rather be putting out you know, neighbor cards, and someone else puts a neighbor card out, plays a card that lets them put out four people, and you only get to put out two. And the people you put out uh, happen to have lava run right in front of them, and that's it. Uh, that's all she wrote. But the game is really quick. We're talking 30 minutes. It's a game that's easy to set up. It's easy to teach. It's easy to play, and it's fun to watch the lava run. It's fun to, there's really a strong take that element, like, ha ha, you, you know, there goes your guys into the volcano. And for some reason, it's fun to pick pieces up and throw them in a volcano. I do not know why. A game can end in a route where one person has way more than others, but I've seen many games end in a very close scores where players actually had to use the tiebreaker of the people in the volcano. But even if that was the case where, you know, someone beats it, you can just quick turn around and play it again. The, this version, if you already have the other version, there's no need to get the new version unless for some reason you're dying to have those three double-sided tiles. Those three double-sided tiles are nice, but they're certainly unnecessary for this game. Uh, I think that they, they add some, some cool factors to the game, but you just don't need them. I'll always use them because they're so easy to teach. But if you've never got this one before, I would compare it to games like Survive. Uh, from Stronghold Games. This has a very similar feel to it. My only, you know, it's, it only goes to four players. It'd be nice if there was five or six, to, but if you have four players, the size of the box, the theme, which is, you know, gruesome in, in reality, but fun in a game setting, and the ease of gameplay as you switch from one phase to the other all works together really well. Downfall of Pompeii. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.